Hello, I'm Linda. On behalf of the Children's Services staff at the Champaign Public Library, welcome to the celebration of International Children's Book Day 2021. International Children's Book Day has been celebrated for more than 50 years on or around April 2nd. Why April 2nd? Because April 2nd is Hans Christian Andersen's birthday. Who was Hans Christian Andersen? Hans Christian Andersen was a writer from Denmark. Let's take a look at the globe to see where that is. We are here in Champaign, Illinois, in the United States of America, which is in the middle of the continent of North America. We need to travel across the Atlantic Ocean to the continent of Europe, and Denmark is right here in the north of Europe. Anderson wrote many different kinds of works, plays and poems and travel books, but he's most famous for the 156 fairy tales and stories he wrote. Maybe you know some of them. The Princess and the Pea, The Ugly Duckling, maybe you know The Emperor's New Clothes, Thumbelina, The Little Mermaid. You may not know The Snow Queen by its title, but if you look at this illustration with the girl and the reindeer and all that snow and the northern lights, you may be able to guess that this is the story that inspired the movie Frozen. Hans Christian Andersen, who wrote his stories in Danish, is among the top 10 authors in the world of all time to be translated into other languages. This is why International Children's Book Day is celebrated on Andersen's birthday. He was one of the first and remains one of the most well-known and well-loved writers in the world of stories for children. Our celebration features modern international stories, books originally published in other parts of the world. We'll start with simpler stories and then move on through more complex stories. Are you ready to travel the world through books? Let's go. Hello everyone from Champaign, Illinois, the United States, in North America. That means we're about right here on our globe. But for the story I'm going to read you, we are going to travel across the Atlantic Ocean to England, East Anglia, England, to be precise. Do you see it? All right, well, our story today is called One Fox, a counting book thriller by Kate Reed. One famished fox. Two sly eyes. Three plump hens. Four padding paws. Five snug eggs. Six silent steps. Seven knocks at the door. Tap, 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 tap. Eight 
eight beady eyes. Nine flying feathers. Ten sharp teeth. <laughs> One hundred angry hens and one frightened fox. <gasps> no hens or foxes were harmed in the making of this book. The end. Hello, today I'm going to share this book, The Happiest Tree, A Story of Growing Up, written by Hyun Ju Lee. Hyun Ju Lee is an author from the country of Korea. I'll show you where that is. So, I'm reading this book to you from the state of Illinois, which is right here on the globe, in the country of the United States of America, North America continent. To get to Korea, we've got to travel all the way across the country and across the Pacific Ocean boop, to get right there. There is Korea. little pink one. I hope you like the story. The Happiest Tree by Hyung Ju Lee. The Happiest Tree, a story of growing up by Hyung Ju Lee. We're going to learn all about this tree's life. I moved to this building when I was 10 years old, said the tree. Beautiful sounds from the Rose Piano class always filled the ground floor. The music came to me through the window. I listen to it with my friends, the birds and the cats. Do you see the birds? And oh, there's a cat. I grew up fast. When I turned 14 years old, ooh, four years later, I meet Mr. Artist on the second floor. Oh, wow, look at all the art he made. He painted a tree, didn't he? For the first time ever, I could see myself. I was happy and excited and full of life. See that? Yeah. Sometimes the groundskeeper trimmed my branches. It was painful, but it helped so that I could grow up quickly. Oh, here we go, he's even bigger. When I turned 17 years old, I could reach the third floor. I was able to glimpse inside the apartment where the Kong family lived. Oh, look at them. Don't they look like a nice family? Oh. Mr. Kong was the father of five puppies. That's the family. The puppies are the family. I like that. My times with the Kong family were some of the happiest of my life. There they are all playing in his leaves after they fell off the tree, right? There are the puppies. When I was 20 years old, 
all that I could see through the dark fourth floor window was a lonely grandmother. She was sitting in a chair looking at a family photograph. There she is. And I felt, I felt sadness when I looked at the grandmother. At 25 years old, I had grown to the top floor of the building. However, only my own long shadow was beside me. Now, no one lives in that apartment, do they? So Tree sees his own shadow. It's very beautiful. <sighs> I was left alone for a long time, said Tree. Yeah. How tall would I be? I spent my days thinking about this. Do you ever wonder how tall you'll be? Until one day, when morning broke, I stretched my branches above the rooftop of the building. And what happened? Now I can hear the greetings of all the other trees in my town. Beyond this old building, I am the happiest ginkgo tree in my town. The Happiest Tree by Hyunju Lee. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm going to share a folk song with you today. We are here in Champaign, Illinois in the United States of America, which is in North America. And our folk song comes from a place called Morocco, which is in Africa. So we're gonna go all the way across the ocean to Morocco, which is here in the Northwest part of Africa. The name of the song is Aram Sam Sam. Okay, for this fun folk song, you're gonna use your hands, your fingers, and your voices. See if you can follow along with me. A uh, ram, sam, sam, a uh, ram, sam, sam, gooey, 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 ram, sam, sam, a uh, rafi, a uh, rafi, gooey, 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 ram, sam, sam, a uh, ram, sam, sam, a uh, ram, sam, sam, gooey, 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 ram, sam, sam, a uh, rafi, a uh, rafi, gooey, 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 ram, sam, sam. Okay, let's do it one more time. This time we're gonna go faster. A uh, ram sam sam, a uh, ram sam sam, gooey 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 ram sam sam. A uh, rafik, a uh, rafik, gooey 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 ram sam sam. That's it, great. Hi, the next book and the next reader are from Australia. I'm Miss Kristen, and this is my husband, Adrian. Hello. We live here in Champaign. Our state, Illinois, is part of the United States, and it's on the continent of North America. To get to Australia, we'll have to go all the way across the country, all the way across the Pacific Ocean, to Australia. It's a long way. Today's book is How the Birds Got Their Colors and it's written by Mary Albert. Mary Albert is from the Bardi tribe in Western Australia. How the birds got their colors. Dreamtime story. This is a story about how the birds got their colors. Long, long ago in the dream time when the land and the animals were being made, all the birds were black, all one color, till one day a little dove flew around looking for food. He flew down to the ground to catch a big, juicy grub. He is now dead. But instead, he landed on a sharp stick. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. It pierced his little foot and made him very sick. For days he lay on the ground in pain. His foot swelled up. He was dying. 
all his mates gather around to see how they could help. All except Crow. He just wandered around with his hands behind his back. Suddenly, the parrot rushed forward and with her sharp beak, burst the little dove's swollen foot. Colors. All the colors splashed all over the parrot. Red and green and blue ran down his chest, wings, and tail. It splashed all over the other birds. Some red, some brown, some blue, and some yellow. Some got spots, some got stripes, all got colors. All except Crow, who was standing away from everyone else. Crow got no color. So that's how birds got their colors. Look at them, good colors. And as as for the dove, he soon got better, thanks to, to parrots, and was able to fly away. Bye-bye. A story about Afia is written by James Berry and illustrated by Anna Cunha. We are here in Champaign, Illinois, in the United States of America, in North America. James Berry is from Jamaica. Jamaica is also in North America. It is right here, an island country in the Caribbean Sea. Ana Cunha is from South America. She lives in the country of Brazil. A story about Afia by James Berry, illustrated by Ana Cunha. A story about Afia. Afia is a Swahili name, meaning health. Afia has fine black skin that shows off her white clothes and big brown eyes that laugh and long limbs that play. She has a white summer frock she wears and washes every night that every day picks on something to collect strangely. Afia passes sunflowers and finds the yellow fringed black faces there imprinted on her frock all over. Another time she passes red roses and there the clustered bunches are imprinted on her frock. She walks through high grass and sees butterflies and all kinds of slender stalks and petals patterned on her back and front and are still there after she has washed her dress. Afia stands. She watches the sharp pictures in color, untouched by her wash. Yet, next morning, every day, the dress is cleared and ready, hanging white as new paper. Then, pigeons fly up before her and decorate her dress with their flight and group design. Afia goes to the zoo. She comes back with two tigers together on her back and on her front.
She goes to the seaside. She comes home with fishes under ruffled waves in the whole stretch of sea imprinted on her dress. She walks between round and towered boulders and takes them away, pictured on her. Always, Afia is amazed, just like when she comes home and finds herself covered with windswept leaves of October falling. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm going to share with you a book from another country. Now, right now, I'm sitting here in Champaign, in the state of Illinois, within the United States, all part of the continent of North America. And the book I'm going to share with you is from a country right in the center of another continent, Europe, and that country is Germany. And the book I have today for you is called The Visitor by Antje Dam. And in the language it was originally written in German, the book was called Der Besuch. So this is The Visitor, or Der Besuch. Remember this picture. Elise scared of everything. She was scared of spiders, and scared of people, and even scared of trees. So she never went out night or day. Elise liked her house to be neat and tidy, so she cleaned it every morning. Sometimes she opened a window to let in fresh air. Then one day something unbelievable happened. A strange thing flew in through the window and landed at her feet. Elise looked at it. That'll have to go, she, she decided. So she scooped it into the fire. But that night, she was too scared to sleep. The next morning, she heard knocking. No one ever knocked at her door. Why would they? She certainly wouldn't answer it. But the knocking didn't stop. In the end, she opened the door. She stared. I'm here for my plane, said the boy. Hmm. And I can't I visit your bathroom? It's urgent, he added. What shall I do, wondered Elise. Then she heard herself say, the bathroom is upstairs on the left. And the boy climbed the stairs and disappeared. It seemed like forever. And then he came back. Who's that, he asked. Elise looked at the picture. And he waited patiently. It's me when I was young, she said with a little smile. I was invited to a dance and I wore my prettiest dress. Cool, said the boy. And he looked around some more. Have you read them all, he asked. I have, said Elise. Every single one. Will you read one to me? It was a long time since Elise had read to anyone. The boy wanted to hear every story in the book. Then he wanted to play. I remember the picture. Can you find where the boy's hiding? Maybe ah, there, under that. When he got hungry, Elise buttered him a slice of bread. 
I think you should probably go home now, she said. That sounded a bit sad. What's your name, asked the boy. I'm Elise, said Elise, and you? Emil, said the boy. Bye, Elise. It's fun at your house. He waved goodbye. Bye for now, Emil, she said. And when it grew dark that night, Elise knew exactly what she wanted to do. You see what she made? Now that is the end of the story. And the book is called The Visitor at Der Besuch, from a country called Germany. Thanks for listening. Sing with me. If you don't know the song, you soon will, because each line repeats. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. This song is sung all around the world, including in Germany, where our last story came from. And in Germany, the song goes like this. Bruder Jakob, Bruder Jakob, schläfst du noch, schläfst du noch? Hörst du nicht die Glocken, hörst du nicht die Glocken? Bim, bim, bam, bim, bim, bam. But that song's not from Germany, it's actually from France which is where our next story is from. And in France, the song goes like this. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonne les matina, sonne les matina, din dan don, din dan don. Did you notice that in each country, the bells sound different? Ding, ding, dong, bim, bim, bum, din, dan, dong. How about that? Let's get ready for our next story. Hello, I'm Linda, and I'm here to share with you a story called Keep an Eye on Ivy by Barreau. Now, I'm reading this story from here in Champaign, Illinois. Find it here. In the United States of America, in North America. But this book, Keep an Eye on Ivy, was written by Barreau, a French author. So we go across the Atlantic Ocean, here to Europe, and here is the country of France where it was written. Let's get started. Keep an Eye on Ivy by Burrell. Here you can see the little cat. <laughs> I'm very happy today. That's because today is a special day. It's my birthday. Look here you can see everybody has presents. The cat, his sister, his grandparents, and his parents. I've been given lots of presents. My favorite is green and leafy, and her name is Ivy. I have to take good care of her every single day. I love it. Even here, he's drawn pictures, painted pictures of Ivy. Oh, and you know, I have my own Ivy.
Susie, where's the cat? Don't ask me. He must be outside chasing mice. Oh, that makes sense. Well, it's Monday, so I have to go to judo class. Will you keep an eye on Ivy? Hi, Grandpa. Have you seen the cat? And where's Susie? I can't find her either. Well, it's Tuesday, so your sister must be at her music lesson. Oh, that makes sense. I've got to go out now. Will you keep an eye on Ivy? Ivy's getting bigger. Grandpa's setting up his train set. Hi, Grandma. Have you seen the cat? or Susie, or Grandpa? Well, it's Wednesday, so Grandpa must be at his chess club. Oh, that makes sense. I'm going to play outside now. Will you keep an eye on Ivy? Grandma's working out, she's got her barbells there. Oh, and Ivy, Ivy's getting bigger. Dad, have you seen the cat, or Susie, or Grandpa, or Grandma? Well, it's Thursday, so Grandma must be meeting her friends at the library. Oh, that makes sense. I'm going to do my homework. Will you keep an eye on Ivy? So there's Dad vacuuming. Here's Ivy. Huh, where are those? cat or Susie or grandpa or grandma or dad? Well, it's Friday night, so your dad is probably playing, playing soccer. Oh, that makes sense. I'm going to bed now. Will you keep an eye on Ivy? Oh, Ivy's getting bigger. Hello, Ivy. Have you seen the cat, or Susie, or Grandma, or Grandpa, or Dad, or Mom? It's very strange. Where could everybody be? Where do you think everybody could be? Do you think that? Do you think that Ivy knows? Ivy's gotten really big. They've been taking good care of her. She's been fed well and watered. Oh. Mom, where's my saxophone? Ask your father. Ouch, someone stepped on my toes. Can you turn the light on? This is very annoying. I wanted to make a cake, but I can't find the kitchen. Have you seen my red tie anywhere, darling? Oh, here you all are. That's good. But who's keeping an eye on Ivy? Ivy, I'm very disappointed in you. It's rude to swallow people without asking first. If you're hungry, let me know. I'll share my snack with you. But guess who will be keeping an eye on you from now on? Everybody. <laughs> no. 
the end. Keep an eye on ivy. So if you have plants, be sure to feed and water them, but keep an eye on them at the same time. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm here in Champaign, Illinois, which is in the United States, which is in North America. And I have a song for you today that comes from Spain. And Spain is all the way across the ocean here. Here's the country of Spain, and it's part of Europe. In Spain, they speak Spanish, so my song today will be in Spanish. You might not understand those words, but you can imagine what it's saying because it's a lullaby. And the words are something like, Go to sleep, my little one. Go to sleep, my love. Go to sleep, little one of my heart. And the title of this song is Duermete, mi niño. Duermete, mi niño. Duermete, mi amor. We are so glad you joined us for our celebration of International Children's Book Day and hope you enjoyed these stories and songs. Remember, International Children's Books are available to you every day of the year at your library. We hope to see you soon.